Hey guys, it's the captain here from Andertons, and I'm at NAM 2017 on the Jackson booth. Just bumped into Phil Dimmel, like you do. Literally, literally bumped into him. And I was going to try and grab Mike Shannon, who's a sort of Jackson master builder, to chat about all the guitars that he's made for famous people. I got my pocket. Yeah, and uh, we might as well start here. So, right. how did you? What happened with you two? How did you hook up together then? Uh, it was 2006 or seven or so, and I had an idea for a shape and threw it at him, and we changed the V shape a bit, put some nice cutouts in it, uh, beveled it up, makes it look really fast. It's a sleek model. Yeah, it's a beautiful. Uh, I, I, it looks like a flying V giving birth to another flying V. Yeah, bee. and it, it like built-in bottle openers by the looks of things. Yes, here. You can yeah. just literally. You can. That's super cool. And are these um, any new spec changes for 2017 on these? No, they're they're Keeping just it just, it was. just aesthetics. We went That's with the fade. Cool. We went with the, the piranhas of the 12. But basically the same guitar. All but, right. Well, look. It's very cool. Thank you very much for letting us catch up. Yeah, man. I'm going to grab yeah, Mike yeah. here, I'll talk about stuff. Get the f out of well, the show, Well, I didn't want to say anything. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. Cheers. <laughs> so, look, we got Mike. Mike is a master builder for Jackson. He's worked with pretty much every single artist that's ever been associated with Jackson. Well, for the last 37 years, I've been cutting wood and building all crazy shapes for nameless, countless people. Do you want to pick one that maybe was like your favorite or the most challenging or something and we can go and have a look and you can tell me the story about you know how that came about? Last year would have been a good year. I did a remake of an Amir Duroc double neck Siamese twin head. <laughs> uh, it's not here this year, but um, uh, that was something I did the first ones in like 1985, which took lots of thought and yep. lots of uh, creativity to come up with a 6 and 12 string that's the heads are glued together. I mean, it was. I didn't even know it was a project. Jackson had done something like that, but I can picture it now with the headstocks glued together. Now you say it. Yeah. Well, it's a mirror to rock is like a mirror book matched head, which was uh, pretty amazing. So what have you got here that, that uh, we can talk about? That's I know there's loads of stuff here, but what, what do you fancy um, going to talk well, about today? Uh, Mick Thompson's guitar is here. Um, yes. I worked since since the summertime working on this guitar with him. Um, it's basically. It's got a three-piece center blank neck. It's got uh, his signature pickups in there. And they're active pickups. Right. It's got uh, black binding all the way it, to the body and contour. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think. So, because he had the he had the Ibanez guitar for a while, didn't he? So yeah. he's gone over to doing the Jackson thing. What did he kind of come to you then in terms of? Did he come to you with a? You know, he well, liked the I, dinky bass model. I, I do or? have a small story with that. He sent us his 1987 um, King V. Right. Which he loved the back shape on it, which was really thin and fast. And that was pretty much one of the main specs that he wanted to copy into this model. So it was kind of cool seeing an old guitar and a guy like him having one from so long ago. Yeah. It was really neat. And in terms of construction, is it is it based on a soloist then? It's based on a soloist, yes. Although, like I said, it's got the three-piece center blank, which is we've done before, but it's not a, a production style model. How, how does that change the, the sort of the tone of the, of the guitar then? Um, you talking about say, a th like a three-piece sort of center block going through the guitar? Yes, I would say it would be uh, it would make the neck uh, more rigid, and and being that it's a really thin neck, yeah, uh, we would put the graphite uh, graphite uh, uh, tension rods in there also to um, keep the neck straight. I'm just saying the, the Floyd Rose on here is this a is this a Floyd that has no trim arm? Yeah, it's a low pro, and it has been modified to where it is. Um, locked in the rear route to where oh, okay. it, it has no movement to it. Why would you have but, a Floyd then? Why not just have a like well, a fixed bridge? It still has the it still has the fine tuners, and oh, that, okay. that's something you might want to ask yeah, Mick yeah. about. I mean, that's something probably he's used in the past, and that's something he really likes. And is this some sort of special tribute set where you get the case and the certificate and everything? I like think, a limited run thing. Well, I, I, I'm not sure how that's working. I just think that uh, there's not many of these made right now, so they want to display it and uh, not let people get their hands on it. Well, I'm gonna. I know. I know you've probably been asked this like a thousand times, um, but I'm gonna go to probably who I think's the sort of the, I guess the most <laughs> iconic of all the of all the Jackson artists over the year. Talking about Randy Rhodes. Um, now you you worked with Randy to do the uh, the Randy Rhodes V. Right. Any stories from that time that you can? Um, well, those times were, we were really young. We we're in our early 20s, okay? <laughs> so we're crazy guys to start with. But um, as far as the shop goes, it was, uh, 
it, it was amazing. I mean, honestly, because we were all so young, the rules and regulations weren't the same as they are today. You know what I mean? So we were kind of, uh, we behaved like kids once in a while. But um, we were being real creative and basically teaching ourselves how to build neck through the body guitars and stuff like that because we didn't learn this stuff from some other place and, and uh, we had to figure things out. Yeah. Make our own tooling. We didn't have engineers. We, we did our own engineering, you know, as, as kids that never been to engineering school. And what, what, but, was uh, he, what was he playing then before he came to you? Well, he had the Carl Sandoval V, the polka dot V. Right. Um, he had his Les Pauls and then uh, he came to see Grover uh, way back when and um, I mean there, there's it's just so sad that he's not around you know yeah but uh, it, it is the iconic guitar that made Jackson yeah. propel to where it is yeah I mean it's, it's a yeah like you say it's an iconic shape do you, do you remember did, did he have a sort of a, a design brief um, did it was it like trying to make like a Les Paul sounding guitar but in a more modern uh, looking and feeling guitar or yeah I think I think mainly he wanted the aesthetics of yeah. something modern and stagey yeah. you know with you know of, of, of the hair days just being started and you know everybody has a Strat or a Les Paul right so yeah what's what's new I needed something different well look mm -hmm. appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to us about the the Mick Thompson and a couple of other things but yeah. anyway this is Mike Shannon from uh, the Jackson custom shop anyway stay tuned for more stuff on Anderson's TV <laughs>